Namaste, and welcome back to Spiritual Intelligence. So as promised, today we're going to talk all about the science, the metaphysics, and the biology of Kundalini Awakening. What is actually happening in the physical and subtle bodies in order to cause this event to happen? And what are its effects? Can it be self-induced? Or does it only happen by chance to those who have the good karma for it? We're going to answer all of these questions and more in this 15th episode of Spiritual Intelligence on the Science of Kundalini Awakening. So in order to understand the phenomenon of a Kundalini Awakening, we first have to have a better idea of how the energy centers work, especially the relationship between the positive and negative poles, or the upward and downward spiraling pranas along the spine. Now, ancient Indian philosophy says that there are three central channels going up the spine called nadis. And the word nadi means river in Sanskrit. And these are essentially the channels that carry prana between all the different chakra points in the body. Now, there's supposedly over 72,000 nadis in the subtle body, which gives you an idea of just how many chakra points we actually have. But only three of these nadis are of central importance to the functioning of Kundalini. And that is firstly the Sushumna nadi, which is the central channel that moves up and down the spinal nerve. And that is the largest nadi of them all. Followed by the Ida and Pingala nadis on either side of the Sushumna. The Ida nadi is our yin or feminine energy symbolized by the moon. And it begins at the root chakra and spirals upwards. The Pingala Nadi is our yang or masculine energy symbolized by the sun and it begins at the third eye and spirals downwards. The Ida carries our primal or physical prana which we know as sexual energy and the Pingala carries our cosmic prana. So through spiritual effort, preservation of sexual energy and a desire for God union the meeting place of these two energies moves higher and higher up the chakras. The higher up this meeting place goes, the more positively charged the crown chakra becomes. And once the two energies meet at the third eye center, this will typically set off a kundalini awakening. So let's take another look at how Ra explains this in the Law of One. The most important concept to grasp about the energy field is that the lower or negative pole will draw the universal energy into itself from the cosmos. Therefrom it will move upwards to be met and reacted to by the positive spiraling energy moving downwards from within. The measure of an entity's level of ray activity is the locus wherein the south pole outer energy has been met by the inner spiraling positive energy. As an entity grows more polarized, this locus will move upwards. This phenomenon has been called by your peoples the Kundalini. However, it may be better thought of as the meeting place of cosmic and inner, shall we say, vibratory understanding. To attempt to raise the locus of this meeting place without realizing the metaphysical principles of magnetism upon which this depends is to invite great imbalance. Meanwhile, the Creator lies within. In the North Pole, the crown is already upon the head and the entity is potentially a god. This energy is brought into being by the humble and trusting acceptance of this energy through meditation and contemplation of the self and the creator. Where these energies meet is where the serpent will have achieved its height. When this uncoiled energy approaches universal love and radiant being, the entity is in a state whereby the harvestability of the entity comes nigh. So a Kundalini awakening is a very long process that plays out over many years of one's life as the entire neurobiology is gradually transformed and upgraded to a higher frequency level from all of the energy gained through intense spiritual discipline. But when we hear the term Kundalini awakening, we typically think of it as the event that happens to people. And so the term that I like to use to refer to this event is the inner conjunction. 
And this really just signifies the beginning of this entire process. But this is, as Ra says, when the upward and downward spiraling energies meet near the root chakra from the Ida Pingala Nadis and polarize together up the Sashumna Nadi, which then causes that lightning bolt to pierce through all the seven chakras up to the crown, where one then experiences this amazing sense of oneness with the universe and sublime spiritual ecstasy. Now, if you've ever experienced this event yourself, then you know just what a supernatural experience this really is. So it begs the question, how can something this phenomenal be real? How does this happen? What clues can science give us that might explain how this inner conjunction actually happens in the body? The science of electromagnetism describes these two kinds of energy as static and dynamic. Static is the negative or potential energy, and dynamic is the positive or kinetic energy. The root chakra, or muladhara, represents the static energy, where kundalini lies sleeping in potential, waiting to be awakened through spiritual effort. The crown chakra represents higher consciousness, the positive energy that is charged through cosmic prana. And so we know that we gain positive charge through spiritual evolution. This creates more and more dynamic energy in our chakras and begins to induce our static energy. So keeping that in mind, let's look at another phenomenon of electromagnetism. The science of induction was first discovered by Michael Faraday. Induction is the opposite of conduction. In conduction, one body of electricity, let's say a copper wire, sends its energy over to another uncharged wire. The energy is transferred from the source, which loses the energy, to the recipient body, which then gains the charge that the source has lost. But induction is the reverse of this. A simple summary of induction is when you place a sufficiently positively charged body next to an uncharged body, it can induce an equivalent but opposite charge in the uncharged body, which causes it to become equally negatively charged. And yet the positively charged body does not lose any of its energy. It simply creates an equal and opposite charge in the neighboring object. So to me, this feels like a pretty good explanation of what might be happening during an inner conjunction. Maybe it's a kind of induction going on between the crown and the root chakras. But it doesn't totally account for the entire phenomenon yet. Because one of the hallmarks of a kundalini activation is that wherever kundalini energy goes in the body, she always feels hot like fire or lightning. Physical healers often describe that when they get into the healing mode, they always know because their hands get hot to the touch. But when Kundalini leaves an area of the body, she always leaves it as cold as a corpse. And people who experience an inner conjunction almost always describe how the whole body felt cold after the event was over, while the top of the head still felt hot to the touch. And this was certainly my experience of this event as well. So what does this mean exactly? What might be the scientific implications of this fact? After my first inner conjunction happened, like most people, I spent a lot of time thinking about this. And all of my thinking and contemplating eventually led me to one conclusion that seems to be undeniable. So what did we say that Kundalini energy feels like in the body? Fire or lightning? Lightning. Have you ever wondered how a lightning strike happens? Some people say lightning strikes from the sky down to the earth, while other people say, no, no, it strikes from the ground up to the sky. So which one is it? I got really curious about this question one day and started doing some research. So I wanna show you the science of lightning now so that you can see for yourself the clues it can give us about the inner conjunction of a kundalini awakening. 
Science shows us that lightning happens through electrical charges that build up in a storm cloud when warm air rises high into the atmosphere. The water vapor in the clouds begins to cool and then freezes to form little ice crystals. And as these little ice crystals rise up higher, they collide with positively charged particles in the cloud and become positively charged themselves as they rise higher. Eventually, the cloud's energy field is displaced, positive or dynamic at the top and negative or static at the bottom. As the positive charges rise higher, it causes the storm cloud to become mostly negatively charged, which attracts positively charged particles from the Earth to rise up to the surface, even up trees or telephone poles. Once the tension between the static and dynamic energies reaches a certain point, the cloud will produce what is called negative electricity. A giant bolt of invisible lightning that moves in many directions all at once. And this is the part we don't see with our naked eyes. Whichever one of the branches of negative electricity hits the ground first will cause the Earth to release all of the positively charged energy that's risen to the surface back upwards through the exact same path that the negative electricity traveled. This is the giant flash that we see with our naked eye. The positive electricity travels upwards through the exact path that the negative electricity designed for it. All of that positive energy is conducted then into the cloud, which offsets the balance of positive and negative charge. And after enough lightning strikes, the cloud is depolarized and stops releasing lightning bolts. So is this what's happening during an inner conjunction? When we compare the principles of electromagnetism in a lightning strike to the inner conjunction event, it seems to explain the phenomenon almost perfectly. Through spiritual polarization, moving consciousness higher and higher up the chakras, like those positively charged ice crystals, we eventually create a highly charged crown chakra like the cloud that forces all the static energy below to be displaced up the spine, which causes a kind of metaphysical lightning strike to happen in the human body. In many of the ancient yogic texts on Kundalini, it's described that there is an energy that enters through the crown and makes its way down the spine towards the root chakra, which awakens the sleeping Shakti who then bolts up the spine towards her lover Shiva at the third eye. And this is also what Shaktipat is. When a guru with an awakened kundalini touches the crown of someone's head, they can cause this energy to go down the spine into the root chakra, awakening that person's kundalini. And in Siddha or Kundalini Yoga, they call it Shaktipat. Well, this sounds an awful lot like the negative electricity that a thundercloud sends down to the earth during a lightning strike. Understanding this was like a huge eureka moment for me because it also explains why the body goes cold after an inner conjunction. So again, at the base of the spine is Kundalini, the static negative feminine energy. And at the crown is the positive dynamic masculine energy. And when the crown chakra gets charged up enough, it attracts the kundalini to awaken and meet it with that dynamic force. And so when Shakti releases herself from the root chakra, she absorbs all the dynamic energy in the body in order to create that massive surge of energy that moves up the spine. And so we know that in every single atom in the body, there is an equal amount of static and dynamic energy. And during a kundalini awakening, Shakti seems to gather up all the dynamic energy in the body temporarily and sends it up to the crown, or at least a whole lot of it. And this is what pierces the six chakras that positively polarizes them, causing a momentary experience of God union and divine ecstasy. So in the same way that the earth gathers up a bunch of positively polarized energy to send up to the cloud, Shakti gathers up a bunch of positive or dynamic energy in the body and sends it up the spine to the crown, causing the body to feel cold. 
while the crown chakra is burning hot, enjoying all of that dynamic energy to itself, which causes this rapid spiritual polarization to happen. But once the experience is over, the energy will settle back down into the body, returning the body to its normal temperature again, and Kundalini will return to her dormant position in the root chakra, ready to be awakened again. And once you've first awakened Kundalini, it's much easier to awaken her again and again and continue to take her higher. But if somebody wants to experience the full Kundalini transformation to the fourth density level, it requires consistent spiritual effort to keep raising that energy back up the chakras to the crown and eventually stabilizing it there. And that is indicative of someone with a fully awakened Kundalini. So this is the part of a Kundalini awakening that can be pretty dicey for some people. Because if this inner conjunction event happens to someone who still has a lot of impurities in their chakras, most notably a strong identification with ego, then it can cause all of those negative energies to start manifesting in the mind. And this is what I call a die-off. It is the dying off of some old blockage, a pattern, a distortion of negative energy in our chakras or nervous system. And so this is why an inner conjunction can be an amazing experience and then leave somebody in psychological shambles for months as all of one's unfinished business comes rising to the surface of the mind to be seen and healed. So this is why approaching a Kundalini awakening gradually is the best approach. Because a certain amount of inner purification is necessary before you allow Shakti to go tearing through your nervous system and burning away all the blockages in her path. Shakti is sort of like a serpent cornering a mouse. The mouse will show its fangs and its teeth and do everything it can to scare that serpent away. And we experience that as psychological traumas and emotional pain until eventually Shakti will consume it. So once this process has begun, it's only a matter of time before inner purification is completed. But the amount of time and the intensity of that purification is definitely up to the individual. So this is the approach that I teach and facilitate in 4D University. I take you through this entire process in a safe, gradual manner that allows for maximum integration and facilitation so that Kundalini's pathway up to the crown is smooth and efficient rather than painful and disorienting. Chakra activation and the raising of Kundalini cannot be achieved by merely repeating mantras. It can only be achieved through a deeper understanding of the way we exist through each individual energy center and by expressing the proper awareness of existence through each center. And this is accomplished by stimulating a higher flow of prana through the nervous system and harmonizing it through advanced yoga practices. Many people experience a spontaneous awakening of Kundalini sometimes induced by intense life circumstances. But the upsurge of energy into the higher centers is usually not followed with understanding, grounding, or facilitation. And so the energy returns back to the lower chakras, causing the distortions there to go haywire. If what is happening to someone isn't understood, they may think that they're losing their mind and go to see a psychiatrist who will put them on tons of antidepressants which only makes the issue worse. As Ra says in the Law of One, to awaken this energy without realizing the metaphysical principles of magnetism is to invite great imbalance. This is because energy and consciousness are one. So if we move energy upwards without the proper awareness of what that energy is, it can cause great mental imbalances. We must understand the principles of consciousness that exist in each energy center before we invite a massive amount of energy there. Without understanding, energy cannot be stabilized in that chakra. So we need to know how to stabilize Kundalini energy in the higher chakras so that she continues to return there and eventually makes permanent residence in the crown chakra, transforming one into a fourth density being. 
the entire nervous system is upgraded to a higher frequency that is finally capable of sustaining bliss consciousness, unconditional love in all situations, and the awareness of oneness. With a third density nervous system, these spiritual highs feel very fleeting because the third density nervous system just doesn't have the bandwidth for that amount of energy yet. So the purification and opening of the nervous system is of paramount importance in this process. Now, what about the neurobiological transformation that happens after this event takes place? As we've said before, Kundalini really just is our sexual energy, which is the most powerful and potent energy that exists. And a Kundalini awakening causes one's sexual energy to be gradually drawn up into the spine through the cerebrospinal fluid and slowly sublimated all the way up into the brain where it's then used to begin expanding the nervous system. As I teach my 4DU students, sexual energy is like the currency that Shakti uses to purchase spiritual evolution with. And so this is why semen retention for men is a huge practice that helps to facilitate a Kundalini awakening. And so over time, all that spinal fluid starts to drip down the back of the throat. And it's called amrita in Sanskrit, which means nectar. And as that nectar is swallowed, it goes into the gut and into the GI tract, where it's then used to further transform the nervous system. And this whole process of drawing sexual energy up the spine, into the brain, down the throat, and into the gut is what is called the nectar cycle. Now, how long this nectar cycle process takes to complete is going to be different for everybody. But there's one thing that's certain, and that's that we can work with Shakti to expedite this process by putting forward a dedicated daily spiritual practice. It is truly remarkable to experience the way that Kundalini transforms one, both spiritually, mentally, and physically, to activate our creative genius, awaken psychic abilities, and cause the awareness of love and oneness to become as natural and effortless as perception itself. Now, in our last episode on Kundalini, I told you about my personal theory that Kundalini and fourth density consciousness are synonyms for the same thing, and that by awakening our Kundalini energy, we're actually activating our green ray body and transforming ourselves into a fourth density being. But this has always just been a theory that I've had based on my own understanding and experience, but Ra doesn't explicitly say this anywhere in the Law of One. But a few weeks ago, one of our members in 4D University made a post from a channeling session from LNL Research with Quo, another social memory complex that includes Ra in it. And this quote absolutely blew me away because it finally confirmed the theory of Kundalini being our fourth density energy. And so just to put a nice bow tie on everything we've talked about today, I'll leave you now with this quote from Quo from March 3rd, 2018. The rising of the Kundalini to the indigo ray energy center is that which you may indeed describe as the activation of the fourth density body, that of the green ray energy center, which is then fully energized to be able to experience the higher vibrations now engulfing your planet so that these vibrations may be shared or channeled and transmitted to those about the entity experiencing the so-called kundalini experience. For through an experience which seems solitary in nature, and indeed is experienced in this manner, it is one which offers the opportunities for the expansion of consciousness for others with whom the entity shall come in contact. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you were truly blessed by it. And I wanted to let you know that I'm really excited to now be partnering with an amazing conscious supplement company called Organifi. A lot of you know that I'm also passionate about holistic health and nutrition. 
and Organifi has been a staple in my daily health routine for a very long time. They make the most delicious, organic, and high quality superfood products that I've ever come across. And as you know, a healthy body is a great benefit for spiritual growth because the health of your body directly translates to the health of your mind. Everything is connected. So feeding your body with high vibrational superfoods straight from the earth is one of the best ways to create that environment for a healthy mind. But getting all the superfoods that your body needs in one day can admittedly be a little bit tough. And that is where Organifi can add a ton of value to your life. I personally start every day off with green, which is Organifi's really delicious blend of 11 superfoods like ashwagandha, chlorella, and moringa. And then in the middle of the day, I'll usually have a scoop of red, which is a delicious energy blend full of 13 adaptogens and antioxidants from berries to recharge your mind and body with a delicious blend of organic superfoods. Your body is an amazing organic machine, but it needs the right fuel and signals to function at its best. And red is full of adaptogens sourced from organic herbs and medicinal mushrooms. And these are compounds that balance hormones, prime your energy pathways, and alleviate stress. So instead of crushing your adrenal system with huge doses of caffeine every day, adaptogens work with your body and give you natural, sustained energy all throughout the day. What's most important to me though about Organifi is the way that they go above and beyond to ensure the cleanest and purest ingredients in all of their products. They are USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, certified glyphosate-free, and absolutely zero fillers. So I never go anywhere without Organifi and I never miss a day without taking it. And Organifi is offering a super generous discount of 20% off of your entire order when you use the coupon code ABKEY at checkout. So if you wanna upgrade your health regimen with Organifi, you can click on the link in the description box below to learn more about all the amazing products that they offer. And I promise you that your mind and your body are gonna thank you for it.